this video, I wanted to um, demonstrate two very useful adjustment layers that I will use on occasion. Now, uh, in the previous video, you know, I showed how I set up my renders over here so that I can easily, you know, select my base colors and adjust them and my highlight colors and adjust them in order to affect my palette. But sometimes um, I like to do a bit more um, deliberate uh, color adjustments. So, all right, um, this page that I have open here is from a graphic novel that I worked on earlier in the year, uh, which I believe is out now. Uh, but it's called also known as uh, the line art uh, was done by Christopher Jones and this first adjustment I'm going to demonstrate is one that I actually did on this on this page um, right so I just created a new layer here um, and actually while I have it selected I'm going to hit command G to put in a group I'm going to name this group adjustments you know because I like to keep uh, on my layers organized so if I have to come back to it I know where I put everything um, but anyway so on this page um, when I was trying to come up with the color scheme for uh, this office um, I you know was going to have here like some warmer like wood type uh, colors and then for the walls I decided I was going to make it kind of um, a dull green uh, however, once I finished the renders, uh, which you see here, I felt that that green, I don't know, was a little bit ugly, <laughs> and I wanted it to be more neutral than it was. So, what I did, again, going over here, created a layer, I'm going to name this one Color. And I am going to put this on to Color Mode, um, which, right, here's your blending modes here, right now it's on Normal, that's the default. I'm going to scroll all the way down and hit color. So now it's on color mode. You can also do the uh, keyboard shortcut which is shift alt C and that would also convert that to color. So now I have this one set to color. Um, now actually before I actually do on this page I'm going to demonstrate exactly what this blending mode does. Because blending modes can get kind of, kind of complicated exactly what they're doing, so I'm going to try to explain this as simply as possible. So I'm going to open up a new document just to demonstrate. All right, so this one I'm going to create a new layer here, and this layer I'm going to hit Shift Alt C and convert that to color mode. All right, so now I'm going to um, take a blue. I'm going to fill this layer in with blue. Now you notice on the vis visually nothing happened. You can see in the thumbnail layer of thumbnails over here the blue filled, but it didn't affect anything underneath. Um, because basically, when it's on color mo mode, all it does is it will affect the hue and saturation of anything that be below it, but it doesn't really affect the um, luminosity of it. So um, I'm going to hide that layer, go back to, to the background, and I'm going to pick, um, let's pick this brown. I'm going to do a gradient across. Yeah, do a few, there we go. So now it goes more into the brown in that corner. Uh, still white. Let's make sure that corner is white. There, white in that corner. So now I'm going to turn that layer back on and you'll notice in the white part it's still not affected but as the color goes in there it has changed that color uh, closer to the hue and saturation of the color layer. So that's basically what color does. It, 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 it's an easy way to change the color of what you have underneath it. So all right, I'm going to access my flats here and I'm going to select all of this different shades of dull green, so the ceiling, the walls, the floor, and these pillars here. So I have all that. Um, turn my renders back on. All right, now I'm going to fill. Like I said, I wanted this to be a bit more neutral. So I'm going to select this kind of neutral gray color right here. And I am going to just fill the color layer in that selection there. And so now you see it went from um, green straight into gray. 
Now, to me, this is actually a little bit too gray now. So um, I want a little bit of that green to go through and still use my initial uh, color strategy on this page. So I'm going to hit the five on my keyboard, which now changes the opacity to 50%. So now it's still gr like more gray than it was before, but there's a little bit of that green coming through. And um, yeah, I'll hit uh, undo. So okay, yeah, there's the grayer, and now with the 50% opacity, a little bit of green, but you can still see it's a lot less green than it was. So that's the first adjustment layer, which is color. All right, I'm going to hit uh, keeping my uh, layers organized. I'm going to hit Command G and put this in a subgroup. Label that one walls, so I know what that one is. All right. Now I'm going to create another layer to demonstrate the next useful um, color layer, which is Darken. I'll rename that now. And um, you can find Darken in the mode or the keyboard shortcut is Shift-Alt-K. Now it's set to Darken. Um, All right, uh, I'm going to go back here and demonstrate Darken now in a similar way. So, all right, first I'm going to fill the bottom layer with white again. All right, go back up to that layer. Now this one I'm going to set to Darken. All right now, you can see with this one, it does affect the white. And you can see it is just straight up that blue color. Um, because basically what Darken does it, uh, how it affects the layers below it is it will take the color on this layer and replace any areas uh, that are lighter with that blue. So then as it goes darker, it will replace it less. So, all right, I'll hide that layer again. Go down below. Uh, I'm going to hit this darker purple this time. And again, I'm going to put a similar gradient. So there we go. Now when I turn this on, all right, you, you can see how it affects everything below it. Um, you know, it, it fills in the white, and then as it goes darker, it affects it less, creating this kind of weird effect here. So this one's a little bit more tricky when figuring out what colors to put into it. But I'll show you how I approach it in a second. But also, I just want to demonstrate. Um, yeah, so if I go and pick a very light yellow, for example fill it there. Now you can see all right, the white part up here has that yellow and then as it gets darker um, the yellow goes away and you can see the white through it and I can slowly pick, choose darker yellows and you can see how those um, it's using that yellow on more and more as I pick darker yellows until uh, let's pick a nice dark yeah and now you can see um, I picked a, dark, a much darker yellow, and now it's actually affecting the purple a bit. All right, so that's uh, basically how that one works. So uh, where this could be useful is, say, uh, down here on this character's skin tone, you know, I have, like, the brighter highlight goes a bit more yellow, and I um, actually did that intentionally, but say, I, but say I didn't like it, and say I wanted it to be more in keeping to the mid-tone. All right. So first, well, actually, let's um, go access my flats. I'm going to select the skin tone. All right, now I'm going to select the mid-tone right here on the cheek. And I will um, let's hide the selection. And now I'm going to fill in that layer. And now you notice that bright highlight has disappeared, but it hasn't really affected the mid-tones or the uh, shadows. Uh, basically because the, those highlight was the uh, brightest part, so it's replaced those pixels with that color. So, um, But I still want a brighter highlight, I just don't want it yellow. So let's, I'm going to um, go over here to my HSB sliders, you know, increase the brightness a bit, decrease the saturation a little bit, and now I'm going to fill it again. And now you can see, all right, now I have a brighter highlight, but it's a bit more pink than before. 
See, there was the original with yellow, and now it's a bit more pink. So uh, that's how I would use darken. And I am going to hit Command G again, create a sub uh, subgroup, call this one flesh. All right, now I'm going to create two more layers. Now this time I'm going to show you where well, sometimes I will combine these ones. So in this instance, let's say um, even though at the character's col or coat color is supposed to be blue, but let's say I did this and I got a note back from the editor or writer or someone and they're like, oh, I'm so sorry, we didn't specify it, but his coat is supposed to be blood red. And it's like, okay, so I had this uh, deep blue, now I need to make it a blood red. So this time, for, for this one, I'm going to use both adjustment layers together. So bottom one, I'll call color. I'll hit Shift Alt C to change that to color mode. Top one, it's going to be a darken. Shift Alt K to change that one to darken. All right, go back to the color one. Go to my flats, select the coat. Now, first, um, I mean, I could you know select a bright red, change that color, but now the shadows are um, very saturated, and I don't want the, the the shadows to be as saturated. So I'm going to actually select this muddier red over here and fill that. So now it's kind of like this um, kind of reddish brown. And it looks good in the shadows, um, but of course the highlights are a little bit like this dull whitish brown. So that's where I use the darken layer and for this one, I'm going to select the brighter red, and I'll fill that one. So now you can see how it affects the color, that affects the colors below it. Shadows are again a little bit, uh, it's still deeper, um, but it's uh, uh, a bit more saturated, and then the highlights go straight to red, which is nice. Now, um, in a situation like this, um, even though it doesn't look too terrible, but say I decide, like, well, that red's a little bit too saturated now. It looks a little alien in the environment, so I might want to try to unify it uh, into first my color schemes. So I'm going to create another color layer on top of that. Hit Shift Alt Color, but this time I'm going to hit the two on the keyboard to change the opacity to 20. I'm going to select the wall color and then I'll fill that in that way. And you can see, you know, it dulled up the red a little bit. It's still a blood red, but now um, it's got a little bit more of this uh, neutral environment color in there. So it's not going to be as saturated and striking. Um, it'll be a little bit more unified with the rest of the color scheme. And continue that group that, call that one coat, and yeah, so that's a quick demonstration on two very useful adjustment layers, and so I hope that's something you'd be able to apply to your own coloring when you need to uh, change the colors around a little bit. All right, thanks, and I'll see you next time. I hope you found that video useful. Please check out some of our previous videos for more tips and tricks. Also, head over to our website where you'll be able to find our online video courses, blog posts, link to social media, and a lot more. And of course, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our future videos.